Welcome back to the Dwarven Fortress of Anvil Quested, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is Dwarf Fortress. And it's been about a half a year since our last episode. And if you're wondering why there haven't been that many updates of this series, that's really why. I've been playing a ton off camera to try to get ready for what's to come, and things just move very, very slow at this point in the game. However, right now we are being attacked by a forgotten beast, Usan, a gigantic three-eyed lizard. It has large mandibles and it has a bloated body. Beware its webs. All right. Before, however, we get involved in a tussle with this forgotten beast, let's profile a dwarf. So we currently have 212 named dwarves. 113. Silver Haze, we've already done that. 41. 41 is Byzantine. So let's take a look at him. Byzantine Avezistun, our doctor. He has no job currently because our dwarves tend to either get killed or be just fine. Also, in a milestone, we have almost a thousand dead slash missing. Now that is dwarves, animals, enemies, the whole shebang. We'll probably get to a thousand before the series is done. But we are going to view Byzantine. Byzantine. Wow, okay. Mother and father are outside of the fortress. All siblings are outside of the fortress. Bloodruna is his niece. Madame Tentaclehammer is also his niece. Bison is his niece. Helena Starbreeze is his niece. Dream Slayer is his niece. Crackshot is his nephew. Infinite is his nephew. Torgar Hammerstriker, Krogai the Second, Lumptador, Wicked Man the One, and Stephanos are also all nephews. And Byzantine... is Byzantine... Byzantine is a he. Okay, good, so I'm right on that. Okay. Byzantine Avus Estun, or Byzantine Mindbound. He is the creator of the artifact Bulbous Drills. Bulbous. Bulbous Drills. Mindbound is actually a really cool dwarven name, so that's that one works. Byzantine is a dwarf, who's 147 years old in the Doctor cast. Within the last week, he felt interest, 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 and interest viewing fine things. Chests, doors, seats, and cabinets. The only bad thing he felt was hopelessness after being nauseated by the sun. Why that would make you hopeless, I have no idea. It may nauseate you, make you sad, make you angry, but hopeless? Like, I can't carry on anymore? I'm nauseated by the sun? I don't know. I don't know. Ah, seeing a tastefully arranged, completely sublime chest. I believe he's referring to a coffer. <laughs> and, uh, slabs and weapon racks. Okay, cool. He is a professional grower, that's his highest skill. He's actually rusty in terms of wound dressing because we simply don't have any wounds that need dressing. As you can see here, his skills in doctoring are really, really low. Our doctors are probably the easiest cast in our fortress because very little is required of them. In fact, I may want to have my doctors do something else, anything else. Maybe maybe not hauling, but maybe smelting. I don't know, just something to keep them busy, and then I can turn them off that if and ever they're needed, which is very rare. So his highest movable skill is Mason. He's often nervous. He's more likely to stumble obliviously and go start raving mad. He occasionally overindulges. He likes to brawl. He's quite polite, humble, and a pessimist. He is private to the point of paranoia, doesn't cling tightly to ideas, and is open to changing his mind. He does not go out of his way to help others, he doesn't generally think before acting, and he has an active imagination. He finds romance distasteful, which is probably why he is single, and he dreams of mastering a skill, which he will likely 
never do. He must have been possessed when he created Bulbous Drills, because otherwise he would be legendary in whatever area Bulbous Drills was. So that's Byzantine. His thought is, I don't feel like telling you about it. <laughs> I don't care, Byzantine. We're profiling you one way or the other. He's tall and bearded. Or belarded. Tall and belarded by great hanging sacks of fat. His ears are fuse lobed. His very long sideburns are braided. His very long mustache is neatly combed. His medium length beard is neatly combed. His hair is clean shaven. His copper eyes are protruding. His nose is slightly hooked. His hair is white with flecks of gray. His skin is copper. He is quite durable, but he is clumsy and susceptible to disease. Byzantine likes Ilmenite, iron, rock crystal. We have lots of iron in our fortress, so he must be happy about that. Leopard bone, flax plant fiber fabric, the color vermilion, crossbows, and goblets. When possible, he prefers to consume persimmon wine. He absolutely detests bats. He has a natural inclination toward language, a good spatial sense, and a feel for music. But he has little willpower, poor focus, bad intuition, poor creativity, and very little patience. So that's Byzantine. All right. So what cavern layer are you on, Forgotten Beast? Cavern layer one. Okay, that's doable. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to, what are we going to do? We're going to set our squads, say, say bum chafes, we'll move here. Well, no. Here. McWinfield will move here. Actually, I'm trying to put them somewhere where they won't go elsewhere. As you can see here, if I place them here, they could theoretically hang out here. And here they could be here. So you want to put them in a place where there's nowhere else they can go besides where you want them. I guess I just created things a little too congested here. And then there's Deramos, who we'll put, I guess, over here with Bum Chase. All right. So let's start with that. While we're waiting, I'll show you what I'm doing down here. I'm moving all my military dwarves down to the bottom floor to get them ready. So this is the giant barracks bedroom that I'm still working on. And this is the barracks where they're going to be training. And this is, of course, bolt supply. That way I don't have to wait for them to go all the way down here to get ready. And I don't have to wait for them to get equipment elsewhere. It's all going to be down here. Save me a lot of time. Also, as you can see... Okay, he just spit webs. He definitely just spit webs. Looks like he's fighting with a cave crocodile and webbed it. Okay, well, as you can see, nature is reclaiming Anvil Quested. There's still some devastation, but for the most part, things are returning to normal, except for these strange areas up here in the corner, which are not clearing up. I'm not sure why, but for the most part, the fortress is doing okay. And spring has sprung, I guess you'd say. All right, we're ready. So, the plan now is to militarize alerts, danger. I hate doing this because they won't do any of the work I need them to do, but it is what it is. And this is first cavern layer, and we want the outer drawbridge. Actually, the first thing we want to do is we want our melee squads. Let's go Oscar, Catnip. Well, we'll leave Catnip. Oscar and Pavette. Actually, you know what? Everyone could use some work. So we're just going to bring everybody here. But we don't have to wait for that. So we are going to find out where the drawbridge is. It's been a long time since anything happened on the first cavern floor. Third cavern. Second cavern. First cavern outer. That one right there. Okay. I could have guessed that. It's the only one that's on. 
So we're going to pull it. Okay. And hopefully as soon as the gate opens, the beast will attack. Hopefully it will open. Did I push the wrong thing? Alright, I think I must have done something wrong. Hold on. Let's just look at all the different caverns here. This one's still fine. This one's still fine. What is happening? Okay, it looks like it just got pulled. Who did it? Das. Or Daz. Man, these dwarves. That's why I'm gonna lock some in this in this room, because otherwise they just don't feel like pulling levers. Alright, this is a lizard, so he should fall rather quickly. He's not made out of metal or anything crazy. You know, I should have gotten rid of these ramps, just to make it harder to get here. Where is this fellow? Here he comes. Okay. So now we want the inner drawbridge. And I'm assuming that's this one. Yep. And we're not going to pull it in time, I bet you. But we'll give it a try. Alright, let's see how this plays out. Here it comes. And bolts should start flying. Boom! Wow. You guys were absolutely terrible. Really. Well... Time for melee action. But here's the problem here. He's going to have plenty of time to web the hell out of us. So, squads A, B, C, D. And I apologize if you can hear the person outside revving their engine. All day this doesn't happen, and then I start recording, and that's what I get. And we're going to move all these guys right here. So they're going to attack him as soon as he makes an appearance. Quickly. Too late. Well, if we get him before he rounds the corner. Okay, well. We got him. That's the good news. The bad news is... We lost some of our friends here. Haunter, Cameron, Dr. Congo, and Black Tweety. Black Tweety was our best. They all were found dead. How the hell did this thing kill four people. Let's see. The Dr. Congo's left lower leg skids along the ground, but it is deflected. He loses... Okay, so he lost hold of his shield and spear, and the Forgotten Beast in one hit severs his head off. Shit. Our military is shrinking like you would not believe. Who do, so who exactly did we lose here? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. They were part of Bavette's big sticks. Looks like all the Varangians survived. And the Elena Blades blades. Who finally got him? Wow, the Narian Wolf hacks the Forgotten Beast. So Narian Wolf did it. Narian Wolf chopped off the beast's head. After the beast just shoots out thick strands of webbing, bites Black Tweety in the head, and the severed part falls off. So this... So you know how when we fight the goblins, and the goblins get knocked out, we chop their head off immediately? It looks like that's what's happening here. Immediately after these four dwarves were hit with webbing, the beast cut off their heads. Which, I, I think this is bad. I think Toady needs to rework the combat a bit, because this was, like, instantaneous. Like, even a super beast can't kill four people in ten seconds. I mean, that's that's a little much, I think. 
I think there's got to be a teeny bit of randomness in there. I also think that we have armor on. So even if they're prone, the armor should have a chance of deflecting something. It shouldn't just be an automatic decapitation. And it's a beast. It's not intelligent. So it also it shouldn't necessarily be going for the head. It can go for a leg, an arm. Ah, oh, well. Our Mark Stores were absolutely, absolutely worth, worthless in this entire event. But actually, you know what? I don't have to lift up any gates because they're still lifting up the inner gate. That's going to go up at some point. Hopefully. This does not bode well for when we fight the other creatures we're going to be fighting. First of all, the levers do not get pulled. We have 48 idle dwarves. 50. Over 50 idle dwarves. And yet, this is how long it takes for someone to pull a lever. 50 idle dwarves. I'm a little bit worried about Anvil Quest, to be honest with you. The game has gotten a lot worse, and I mean this in terms of gameplay since the last year's version, or since the previous version, two years ago, whenever it was. But now we have four dead dwarves. That's terrible. And we're not going to replace them, of course, because they're melee dwarves. So that was a shame. I don't even know if we have enough slabs. I think we do. But just to be sure, let's construct ten more slabs. And we'll go down here to the Crafts Dwarfs workshop. And we're going to engrave some memorial slabs. Dr. Congo, Cameron, Haunter. Man, that was a mess. That was a terrible mess. Those brave dwarves shall be missed. If only the Mark Storbs would have done their job. But that's our situation. Well, at least our number of idols has dropped now to 16. Things will be better, though. When we, when we lock... I'm going to put, like, three dwarves in here. When we lock them in, they will only be able to pull levers or sleep or eat. So... But I'm not filling this up with food as well as I would like. So we are running a little bit low on drink. As you can see, our food is good, but we're running low on drink. So what I did was I took three of our food service people. And that is... Where is food service? There they are, food service. And I took Lazy Git, Lilu Multipass, and Thorin, and I set them to do nothing else in this world besides brewing. Because for some reason, nobody was brewing, and it was really driving me nuts. So now, they should be full-time brewing. It looks like they are. So we should be quickly replacing our alcohol stocks. Because I want at least enough so that this room will be filled with alcohol. So going back down here, this is proceeding very slowly since we only have one really good mason. Our one angry guy is now sort of okay. I think that was Naki. Well, now Naki's in the middle instead of down here, so that's good. Let's see, do we have any beds? We do, okay. So let's finish this off. Okay. Any cabinets? We have a couple. Oh, not copper. Crap. There needs to be a better way to do this, too. Like, you should be able to... Like, once I select something, like, once I select a chert cabinet, it should only let me place chert cabinets until I tell it not to. That would be super ideal. But until then, I just have to be careful and slow. And do we have any coffers? 
We have one. Oh, there it is. This should hold... Oh, I don't know. Most of everybody. They're not all going to be sleeping at the same time. So even if there's more dwarves than there are beds, that's still okay. But I was not impressed. I was not impressed at all by these... By these Marks dwarves. We're almost in the seventh month. These chickens have been sitting on these eggs for a long time. I think sometimes there's a bug where the eggs just won't hatch. And that might be... That might be happening here. I don't know. Let's see. Oh, we can't go inside the nest box? So, turkey hen egg. And it says, N fur. Does that mean not fertilized? I have no idea what N fert means. I mean, I suppose it would have to be not fertilized. Or no fertilized. Unfertilized. I don't know why they would be unfertilized. We have plenty of roosters running around. Hmm. Interesting. What else is new? Oh, I want to show you this. I've been doing this for a long time, but I've pretty much stripped this entire floor of marble. And I've kept this pattern of pillars throughout the whole thing, even down here. So I'm, I'm slowly expanding it. Let's see. So one more row here. And, well, this was a mistake. I should have left something here. But you can't win them all, I guess. That's too bad. I was having it look so nice. And now... There's this. Now I gotta be careful here because this is. Yeah. So I can dig this out and I could dig these three out, but this has to be saved for a pillar. So, but as you can see, I'm slowly taking out all the marble of this entire floor. And I'm, it just, I just think, like the way it looks, where you have these big stone chunks that aren't marble, but everything else around them that's not part of the pillar system has been dug out. I made a little mistake here, too. Where is it? Hmm, I lost it. Oh, here. Yeah. See, this corner's out. No, don't want to do that. So that's Anvil Quested, really. That stinks about the four dwarves that we got killed, though. It hasn't caused anybody to be upset. At least not yet. How are we doing on making those? Three of them are done. Alright. So many dead dwarves here. There's Dr. Congo. There's Black Tweety. And there's Cameron. And I'm really also upset, and not, this is not the first time I've said this, by the way that slabs for enemies are handled in this version. It's crap. Like, it doesn't even tell you what it is. So, for example, this is a Masterful Church Memorial to Solore, Thessalrina, Nweni Fedi. Now, what was that? Was that our dragon? Was that our forgotten beast? It should also tell you the name in both Dwarven and English. There's just, it just, it almost seems like they're not... I don't know what to say. I mean, if you read the updates that come out frequently, it really seems like the developers are, or Toady is, is into it, and he's adding all these things, but there's little things that should be really easy to do that would make things make more sense. Like, not every single enemy that gets killed should be went missing. It should say, was killed by so-and-so. You know, using an axe, or whatever. That would, why not? I mean, why not? I mean, we record it in the reports. It says so-and-so, the park sailed off in an arc. It should be something that's possible. And then, why not say this is a masterful true memorial of the dragon, or the forgotten beast, or the orc, or the cyclops, or whatever, but just something, instead of just this random string of words that don't even make sense. Thank goodness the dwarf ones are better. Because 
the enemy ones are just not good at all. There's no point in making a slab for your enemies, and that's lame. It should be awesome. It should be like slain by the brave dwarf, you know, whoever killed it, and using the weapon, whatever the name of the weapon is. It should be really in-depth and cool. So you look at this, and it's like a memorial to the triumphs of your dwarves. At least that's what I think. But what do I know? And here they come. So before the end of the episode, we'll look at them real quick. They're having a hard time setting them up. Come on, guys. All right, here's our first one. Dr. Congo. This is a masterful church memorial to Dr. Congo Murak Vukar, created by Ursula. The slab reads, in memory of Dr. Congo, born 92, struck down by the Forgotten Beast Usan Mukusank in the rampage of the Forgotten Beast Usan Mukusank in Anvil Quested in the year 160. Devoted mother and wife, lover of Unicorn Hoof. Now see, this knows what killed him. And this knows what it is. It didn't just say he was killed by Usan Mukusank. It says, the Forgotten Beast. I don't see why it can't do that on the slabs for the Forgotten Beast themselves. No reason. There is no reason. This is a masterful true memorial to Black Tweety. Uzolzit. Same thing. Born 63, struck down by the Forgotten Beast Usan Makusank in the rampage of the Forgotten Beast Usan Makusank. Slayer of the Goblin, Dost and Gosp, Cradle Jackals, devoted mother and wife. And Black Tweety was probably our best chance at getting a nickname dwarf. She had, what, like five notable kills and just needed one more? Well, not anymore, unfortunately. Okay, here comes the next one. That would be Cameron, I believe. And let's see if the next slab is created already. It is. Okay. Alright, and this one reads... This is a masterful church memorial to Cameron... Umam Muzal, born 128, struck down by the Forgotten Beast, as we all know, in 160, creator of the Coil of Maws, loving husband, admirer of Elk. Alright. So that leaves us with just one more that should be on the way. In the meantime, is there anything else unique and interesting to show you? We haven't really done much except for focusing on the downstairs area. One thing I have done, though, is I have accumulated quite a bit of crappy goblin gear, and also gear that I made at the beginning of this LP that isn't very good. Mostly iron stuff. So I'm having it all melted down, but because it's all the way here at the top, and the furnaces are down at the bottom, as you could probably guess, it's a very slow process. I sit here and I go, okay, 30 idlers. You'd think those 30 people would come and take this down to be melted, but you'd be wrong. But things are, I believe, slowly getting melted. Because if you look, if you look down here, we've got... See right now, this is an active job, melting a metal object. This, they're smelting magnetite, but next they'll be melting a metal object. Melted metal objects. So it's happening. It's just happening. Not with a quickness. Alright. Here it comes. And with that, we'll end the episode. Because this is almost 30 minutes. It'll be just about 30 minutes. And then I'll probably play for another 4 or 5 hours before we're ready to record something else again. But overall, I'd say that Ambiquested was an enjoyable experience. Did a lot of cool stuff. I've never lost this many dwarves, though, I'll tell you that right now. I've had forts go 15 years or so. I mean, generally, they, they become kind of hard to play after 10, but where I've only lost a few dwarves and had the opposite. This room right here was full of Forgotten Beast memorials. Like, I just killed 20 of those guys and hardly lost any dwarves. This, obviously, not the same, not the same case. 
Our dwarves were surprisingly more mortal in this iteration. Alright, so this is a Masterful Church Memorial to Haunter in Gazam. Born 130, struck down by Usan. Militia Captain of the Mountain of Distraction in 159. Slayer of Goblins. Oh crap, he was the Militia Captain? So do we not have a captain then? Is that... Bump Chafes. Oscar's Frangians. No. What? That must have been a mistake. Because, yeah, we have Catnip, who's still around. Bavette, who's still around. Oscar, who's still around. Bump Chafes, who's still around. And then Deramos and McWinfield. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe it was a mistake when I was setting these up and he became a militia captain for like five seconds. And that's cool, though. It's on his tombstone. Picks or it didn't happen. <laughs> so once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is Dwarf Fortress. Have a good one.